Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. It gives me great pleasure today to introduce a guest on the program. This man is a world traveler. He's a Bible enthusiast. He is a member of Etz Chaim. Etz Chaim means tree of life. I'd like to welcome to the program Ray Solar. Welcome, Ray. It's a pleasure to be here, Myers. And thank you for inviting me on your show. Well, we're going to explain today what is Hanukkah. And I'm going to need your help, Ray, to explain it. Oh, that's great. Uh, we uh, celebrate uh, Hanukkah uh, uh, every year also at Etz Chaim and all the feasts of the Lord. Okay, Hanukkah I'll... is not a feast of the Lord, but we, we celebrate. It's a feast we're going to discuss in a moment. But uh, you can come down and join us at Etz Chaim at Saturday at 1 p.m. And we have a Bible study also at 4 p.m. Okay, would you give the phone number and the address of, uh, of the Eschayim? Okay, our address is 134 South Main. It's uh, at the corner of Griggs and Main and Water. Griggs and Water. And the phone number is 866-874-7250. And there's a rabbi there named Rabbi Mordecai Silver, and he's a very wonderful guy. Yes, he is. I know him personally, and uh, I recommend that if you would like to, go on down and, uh, and uh, attend his service. Uh, Ray, uh, before we get started, before we get started, I'd like to offer two very important booklets. The first booklet is, Why Were You Born? It's a very important booklet on the inside cover of this booklet. It says, in my younger years, I often wondered what was the purpose of life with its pains, problems, and eventually death. I had been taught if I had been good all my life, I would go to heaven when I died. No one ever told me what I would be doing for all eternity in heaven. Would I be walking upon the streets of gold? Would I be playing on a harp or like the song would I be rolling around heaven all day like the sun? In 1955, I came across this booklet. It gave me the answer to the purpose of life. I am reproducing it, hoping it will help you as much as it did me, Tom Justice Pastor. And since we have Christmas coming up, we have a booklet that's called The Plain Truth About Christmas. On the front cover, it says, where did we get Christmas? From the Bible or from paganism? Here are the astonishing facts which may shock you. Do you know the origin of the Christmas tree, of Santa Claus, of the mistletoe, holly wreath, and the custom of exchanging gifts? All you need to do is call the phone number on the screen. We will have someone this morning ready to answer uh, and send you these booklets free. You could have a DVD of the program, no charge. And now, Ray, uh, we're going into the Bible. Now, in the Old Testament, Ray, there is no mention of Hanukkah. You're aware of that, I'm sure. Yes, uh, there is only a mention in the Apocrypha, in the book of Maccabees, and uh, they tell the story of Hanukkah. Right. But, as you're going to mention, Hanukkah is mainly mentioned in the New Testament. Yes. Well, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to John chapter 10, and we're going to look at verse 22. Now, it was the Feast of Dedication, that is Hanukkah, in Jerusalem, and it was winter time, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Now, do you have a comment about that, Ray? Jesus yes. walking. It, it, it's, this is very important when they, you see a word called walk. In Hebrew thought, that means really 
getting involved and following this thing. You're supposed to walk the Torah, walk the commandments of God. Yeshua says, come and walk with me. You see, take up, arise, and walk. See, that is a very important thing. So if uh, Jesus, and we call him Yeshua, because that's his Hebrew name, right, uh, was just standing there, you could probably argue maybe he was not being involved with it. But if he was walking Hanukkah, the word Hanukkah means dedication, feast of dedication. If he was walking the feast of dedication, that means he was really involved with it. Okay, it has a lot of importance. If you'll turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to look at verse 15. Now, Jesus says here in Matthew 24, verse 15, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So he's talking about this abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now we're going to the book of Daniel. Let's go to Daniel chapter 8 and we'll look in verse 11. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. So, we know that Antiochus Epiphanes, he was a Syrian Greek king, and he sacrificed a sow, a pig, in the temple. And the daily sacrifices were taken away for a period of time. We know that. That's history. Ray uh, we're going to go to one more scripture, and that is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm going to read that. <clears throat> now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's his coming. It's talking about his coming back to this earth and our, our gathering together to him. So we're going to meet him. We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. That's past tense. That it, the day of Christ had already came. Now, we're going to read a little bit further here, and let's look in verse... Uh, just continue. We'll, we'll continue. Let us, let's take a look at the screen. In the screen, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. So that's a falling away from the truth. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Now this is a future happening. This has not happened yet, Ray, but this is a future mm -hmm. happening, a final fulfillment of what Jesus spoke about in Matthew chapter 24. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we're going to go on here, and we're going to uh, uh, let you do, uh, let you explain Hanukkah as it's celebrated today. Okay. I, uh, w before we continue, you were also going to mention to me something about uh, Thessalonians 12. Could we go back to the screen? And yeah, let's go back to the screen, and we'll start in verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed. He's going to be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay, there's some more up the top. And the coming of the lawless one. 
is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Okay. These are people who are going to be confused. They're going to be deceived. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. A lot of people are going to believe that this individual is God, that he is, this, that he is the Christ, but he is the Antichrist, that they all might be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So that completes that. So we're looking forward. We're looking forward into the future for this fulfillment, for this person who's going to be at the temple declaring himself as God, okay? And he is not. He is the Antichrist. Ray, would you like to comment on any of that? Yes, and Hanukkah, in a way, is a picture of that happening before. As what's going to happen in the future, it happened again with Antiochus and the battle between him and the Maccabees. Uh, Antiochus was one of the generals of Alexander the Great. And when Alexander died, he took over the part of the land that included Israel. And he decided that Israel should no longer have their religion or their customs or their beliefs, that they should adopt the beliefs of the Greeks. And so he took everything away from them. But the Jewish people, there were some of them who decided to stand up and say, no, we are going to stand for the God of the Bible. We are going to stand for truth. And we are not going to go into the Greek methodology of thinking. And as a result of that, many bad things happened. Hundreds of thousands were killed. There's parts in the book of Maccabees that talk about people who were killed because they wouldn't even, they wouldn't eat pork. And he would sacrifice pigs and then insist that people eat these. But then a small group called the Maccabees, they rose up out of a city called Modi'im. And from Modi'im, they came and they went against the most powerful army in the world, Alexander's great army. Nobody could defeat his army. And with this band of makeshift warriors, there were really just farmers and whatever you could find, businessmen everywhere. They picked up shovels and uh, plowing shears, <laughs> like they say, and they took on Alexander the Great's army and defeated the army and sent the, the, um, the Greeks running and they never came back. They were so decimated and, and, and mentally demoralized from that defeat. They said, we're not going back to that land. <laughs> that was the real miracle of Hanukkah, was it not? Absolutely. They, that they were able, a small group of people were able to overcome against all odds mm -hmm. and, and win and regain their freedom. Yes, that incredible miracle. And the strangest thing is this group came from a town called Modi'im. And uh, both times when I went to Israel, the first place I wound up was in the city of Modi'im. And I didn't know what purpose it was and, and why God brought me to that city. but. When I began studying Hanukkah, I, it all made sense. Wow, that is tremendous understanding. Uh, and we're going to take a break here soon, and we're going to come back. You folks stay tuned because we are going to give you some more information about Hanukkah. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to La Buena Vida Women's Club, located away from the crowds, but close to home. Come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. Treat yourself to a relaxing massage, or unwind in the lounge area, or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club, located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721.
Hi, Las Cruces. Just hanging out by the pool. Do you want to promote your business or event? Well, check out our website and watch your profits go up. see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, it's always a celebration. Okay, we understand that the book of Maccabees is not in the original Bible. We could find it in the Catholic Bible, but it's a, it's a book that gives us some information about this whole uh, feast of dedication, and it gives us some Bible, his, gives us some history about what has happened. Ray, I'm gonna ask you to continue with uh, your thoughts on uh, Hanukkah. Okay, uh, to start with, I'd like to read a little bit from the book of Maccabees. Okay. Uh, it'll tell us how they got the date and the, and the, um, and the time and how, why it's eight days. So uh, let us uh, go to the book of Maccabees and see what it says. It happened that on the same day on which the temple had been profaned by the foreigners, those are the Greeks, the purification of the temple took place. That is, on the 25th day of the same month, which is... Keslev, and they celebrated it for eight days with rejoicing in the manner of the Feast of Tabernacles, remembering how not long before, during the Feast of Tabernacles, they had been in the mountains wandering, and they had been wandering in the mountains and caves like wild animals. So you, you can see from the book of Maccabees, they did Hanukkah on the exact day that they had stopped and profaned the worship of God, they brought it back yeah. as to, to restore full circle. And the reason they made it eight days, according to the book of Maccabees, is because they weren't unable to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, which was about three months before, and they said, let's keep it the same length as the Feast of Tabernacles. Wow, and, and that's how we happen to have eight days now celebrating Hanukkah. For eight days yes. because it takes us back to the Feast of Tabernacles which was also celebrated for eight days yes okay now your daughter has a song about Hanukkah we'd like to play that song and uh, would you would you put that up okay and, uh, I'll give you a little description yeah give us a little description uh, Hanukkah is also known as uh, the um, the Feast of Lights and the, the Interesting thing, and we'll talk in a moment how Josephus actually called it the Feast of Light with one light. But when you light candles on Hanukkah, many Jewish people sing a song called Ma Ozur. And Ma Ozur in Hebrew means mighty rock. But the second line, the second word that they say after mighty rock is Yeshua T. And as you can recognize, Yeshua is in there, and T means my. So they're really saying, mighty rock, my Yeshua. In their minds, they don't see it. They think it's my salvation. But for those of us who have been enlightened, we see mighty rock, my Yeshua. So let's hear the song, Ma Ozur, okay. mighty rock. It's... <laughs> Yeah. 
This is really beautiful, a beautiful song. I appreciate your daughter and the, and the effort that she went to, to to do this song. And my Yeshua is, in English is my Jesus. And yes. uh, it is so beautiful, so wonderful. And, uh, and uh, Josephus talks about this being a festival of light. He doesn't use the plural, he uses the singular. And that light that has come into the world is Yeshua, is Jesus. We call him Jesus, and, and I know the Messianics call him Yeshua, his Hebrew name, and uh, we call him by his Greek name. Uh, we call him by the name that we read in the Bible, and that's fine. I appreciate both. And uh, Ray, uh, would you comment about that light that has come into the world? Yes. Uh, many people think that uh, Jesus was born at this time. But really, when we understand when conception takes place, that is when life begins. That is when the soul comes in. And then birth is something that happens nine months later. So during this time, the light came into the world. Yeshua came into the world and he was conceived. And then during the fall feasts of Yom Teruah, which is the trumpeting sound, trumpeting the coming of the Lord, and Yom Kippur, atonement, prepare yourself, and Sukkot, which is the, the feast, a wonderful eight-day feast. This is the time when he was actually born. And so, at this time, Josephus was mentioning festival of light, and the light is Yeshua. Wow, that's, that's tremendous. Well, we, we come the full circle. Uh, in 175 BC, Antiochus Epiphanes uh, caused the sacrifice to be taken away from the temple. And in 166 BC, and this is according to Josephus, you can read this for yourself. M Mattathias, who was the high priest, had died. And his son Judas Maccabeus, Maccabeus means hammer. He hammered those Greeks. And by 160, by 167 BC, Antiochus ordered this altar erected to Zeus, erected in the temple. He ordered pigs to be slaughtered on it. And uh, the temple was desecrated. And it took the 25th of Keslev, when he did this, on the 25th of Keslev, it took four years later, it was cleansed on the exact same day. A miracle was performed when they overthrew the Greeks. It was like a declaration of independence that we observe today in you this know, country. You know, that's very interesting that our own struggle for freedom here in America is like the struggle for freedom that the that the Hebrew people had against the Greeks. And in fact, we had very, a lot of similarities. If we go to the Declaration of Independence and we read the first line of the Declaration of Independence, we see that this is a battle with a God at the center of it. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain un alienable rights and that was saying that God has given man certain rights and no government can take those away that's the same thing that the Maccabees were saying when they were overthrowing the Greeks God has given us the rights to worship and you cannot take this from us 
Right, exactly. We have freedom of worship today. When you, you go back, when you go back to the days of Antiochus Epiphanes, the Jews were not allowed to, to circumcise their children. They were not allowed to read the Torah. They were not allowed to uh, do all of the customs and traditions. They didn't have freedom of religion. Uh, the Greeks tried to Hellenize the people. That's the Greek language, Greek customs, Greek gods. And now the Judas Maccabeus and his followers had overthrown that Greek domination and set the people free. Wow. A, a great miracle happened there. And the dreidel that the little children spin to play games with is about that. It has the words, Nes Gadol Haya Sham. That means a great miracle happened there. And when you play the dreidel in Israel, you say a great miracle happened here. And that's what Hanukkah is. It's to celebrate the great miracle of freedom and of a small group overcoming an army and the miracle of Yeshua being conceived into the world. So tremendous. Wow, what a tremendous opportunity we have here today to explain Hanukkah to people. A lot of people out there do not understand Hanukkah. And uh, now i just like, Ray, just to, to offer these two booklets. The Plain Truth About Christmas and Why Were You Born? Please send away for these booklets. They're free. And we have a, uh, we have a uh, DVD of this program. It's also free if you'd like it. And just uh, call us on the phone number that you see on the screen. We'll have somebody there ready to take your order. Ray, I want to thank you so very, very much for coming on the program. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. And you're always welcome to come back. Well, that would be great. There's many topics we can discuss. It's when two or more are united, that's when we have the Holy Spirit. And I'm glad to be on the show and to bring inspiration to other people to enjoy the holiday of Hanukkah. Well, please come back and we'll see you next time. And until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.